This episode is brought to you by FX's Feud, Capote vs. the Swans. Inspired by actual events, the series tells the story of Truman Capote and the women he betrayed. The original housewives, they were society's most elite women. Rich, glamorous socialites who defined a bygone era of high society New York. From creator Ryan Murphy, this drama series features an all-star cast, including Naomi Watts, Demi Moore, and Diane Lane. FX's Feud premieres January 31st on FX Stream on Hulu. Is it pumpkin spice time again? Hello, I'm Anita Joyce here with Kelly Wilkness, and this is Decorating Tips and Tricks, Fall Tips and Tricks. We thought today we'd just give you some inspiration and some ideas. Fall is my favorite season. I think mm-hmm. it's Anita's as well. Oh, yes. I love and I did it. a little research online, and I believe that fall is predominantly the favorite season uh, for any, at least the people that took various polls and things that I was seeing online. Uh, but why is girls. that? Because the spring, we have all the beautiful flowers, but I do love fall. I just love it. Yeah, it's interesting. Uh, they didn't really say why, but like I was talking to my daughters about it, and both of them really love fall too, which is interesting because as a kid, you know, you think summer or Christmas time, mm-hmm. but they both love fall too. So I don't know. It's just that feeling. Must be all the pumpkin spice. The pumpkin spice. But I think also if you've been a kid or you have kids, fall seems kind of like the time of new beginnings. The idea of going back to school and there's something new, like that feels like such uh, an opportunity to start again, which may be part of the whole fall appeal. Yeah. Well, here it gets so hot. I mean, just the first cool morning, I just am just ecstatic. It feels like Christmas to me. (laughs) Yeah. 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 So exciting. So, okay, well, let's get to it. Yeah. Well, I pulled out my bins and Uh I had greatly reduced my fall decor last year. You know what? I didn't find myself thinking, gee, where's that blah, blah, blah. I just knew there was less and I was happy with what I kept. So I have one bin and then one small, uh, sort of small container, like almost like a file size Mm -hmm. container with stuff that is a little bit more breakable. But I I do have some faux pumpkins because I bought those about a year or two ago when uh, one of the magazines was coming and I couldn't get any pumpkins because it was too early. Is that when you bought out some store and they were Trump yeah, they were full of them. I remember you talking about them. Yeah. And then I had to decide they all had to be white. So then I tra- yep. painted them all. It was quite a production. So that really is the only item that's in this big bin. So I've got these pumpkins. I've got a couple of stacks of books that are sort of seasonally appropriate too. They talk oh. they, like maybe they're talking about leaves in the title or there's one about witches of Salem and things like that and definitely in the browns and um, blacks and uh, golden tones and so I have that and then I have some amber bottles and um, some acorns and a few other things tucked in there and that's really what I'm going to put out this year in addition to some natural elements. That's what I'm going to use this year. And of course, some real pumpkins. Well, I that sounds wonderful. And really, my emphasis as we go through this list is on very natural things. I don't like buying a lot of uh, fake things like the fake pumpkins. But the fake pumpkins, I think that's fine. I think that's great. But I don't do, you know, I don't buy a lot of stuff that says fall, y'all. And, you know, so... <laughs> that no that is so funny and one time I we we were in a group you may have been in this group it was like a group of bloggers a while back and there was predominantly girls that live in the south and I thought I was being cute being like oh you know something about y'all and I put it in an email and I spelt it wrong I guess y'all is it there's a certain way to spell that and Mm -hmm. I didn't spell it right (laughs) and they were like you are such a Yankee like whatever yeah so I would definitely not have that or if I had it it would be misspelled on my sign Okay, so uh, one of the, m- my favorite things to use, whatever the season is, is to buy some ribbon that goes with that season and then just kind of putting it around the room. So that's really a pretty easy way to do things. And then, so I kind of have a new theme uh, for the house so I don't get bored with it. And ribbon is really a pretty inexpensive 
purchase. In fact, I just found my tartan ribbon that I actually bought from the UK and had shipped here <laughs> because that's uh, because I just love a uh, tartan ribbon. So I just found it looking through one of the closets. And so that's why I'm going to get some of that out to use for the fall. Uh, but I think ribbon is such a great thing to use. You can use kind of um, a check or a plaid. You can go with colors for the season, you know, tans, browns, orange, white, black. Um, I think any of those would work well. And you can even go off road as far as your colors. I don't think you're stuck with orange and black. I love tartans. We have one for our family, uh, but those are so beautiful to have. And this, if you have them, this is the time to bring them out. And you don't even, you know, the, with the tartans, you don't, they don't have to necessarily be fall colors, but it just kind of says fall, doesn't it? Oh yeah. I think of um, those stadium blankets exactly. and things like that in the, the tartan and the wool and just, yeah, it's just really a lovely way to nod to the season without banging yourself out of the head with a fall y'all sign. So <laughs> I think it's a good way to go. Now, I I love the idea of the ribbon. It could be a very inexpensive way to go. So give us some ideas of what, what would you do with the ribbon? Would you in, entwine it in a wreath or would you just tie it onto something? What would you do with it? Yeah, you could put it on a wreath. Well, really anything. You put it on a wreath. If you've got, I've got a lot of antiques that have those uh, keys in them, the antique keys. Mm-hmm. So I think it's great to put a bow on those keys. I put it on um, my lantern in my breakfast room. Uh, I put it on the newel post on my uh, stairwell, or you can kind of wrap it around your stairs all the way going down the the handrail. There's some wonderful videos to learn how to make the multi-loop bows. And those Mm. are what I prefer. Those are the ones that I use around the house. And then if you get, make those and you use some wire for those, then you can, uh, you know, set them aside. Maybe don't use them next year unless you want to, but you could kind of do those like, oh, I used those three years ago. Now I'm ready to see them again. Mm -hmm. Or you could just pull them out for each year. No, those are great ideas. And I was thinking about what you're saying about you don't have to stay with the colors uh, that are traditional Mm -hmm. colors of the season, the autumnals and the oranges. Thinking of a palette for you, Anita, like What about plum and a sagey green and a neutral? So then you could bring in the fall look with maybe some eucalyptus. Mm -hmm. I'm sure you could find a dried flower that had some of the plum in it. Hydrangeas, some wheat. Oh, hydrangeas, Mm -hmm. right. And then Mm -hmm. maybe you make a whole little like a posy or a bouquet of those. You know how they have the wheat sheaves that can kind of stand up. You could put ribbon around that. Yes, I have some of those and I love having those sitting out around. Right. And even if you found like an inexpensive wheat sheaf that stands up, I think everybody probably knows what I'm talking about. You Mm -hmm. you can find those at Home Goods or whatever. And if you didn't like the color, say it has some sort of Halloween ribbon on or something, just get a ribbon that's wider and Mm -hmm. wrap around a a ribbon that you love. Exactly. In fact, speaking of all those colors you're talking about, What about our velvet pumpkins that you and I have? They're all over now. I mean, there's really not just one source for those anymore. The velvet pumpkins are all over, but we'll link to the source that we have pumpkins Mm -hmm. from or a couple of sources. We have them from shops that really do it right. You know, Mm -hmm. every velvet pumpkin is not created equally. That's, and some of them have yes. fake stems and you really want one that is having a real stem and the velvets are not all the same. So yes, but that is something that you might think, oh, that's such, you know, it really is an investment. You know, some of the bigger ones or you get a collection of three, you're talking about over a hundred dollars, right? Right. Uh, but I've had my velvet pumpkins for several years and they look fantastic. And that's one of the few things I get out every year and it just makes me smile. I am so happy. They're so beautiful. So you will not be sorry. No, you will not be sorry, and you will use them over and over again, and they always look elegant. You know, like mm-hmm. you know, my faux pumpkins that I had to get in a pinch, and now I just feel kind of bad about throwing them away or giving them away. I did give some away to Goodwill, uh, and all the effort I went into s- to chalk painting them, and they really did use them when mm-hmm. the magazine came because there was no way I was finding – they wanted to do fall in May. I was not finding right. a pumpkin no, in California you can't get, in May. No. <laughs> If the house was on fire and I had to pick a pumpkin, I'm certainly going for the velvet. <laughs> yes, we know which ones you're getting. That's right. <laughs> so yes, that's a great thing to invest in. Some other things, like I was saying, the vintage books. I mean, you might be able to get those for a song mm-hmm. if you go to a thrift store or something like that. So look for ones that have sort of a fall theme or at least the colors that you like, uh, that you want to use for your fall. And then you put a little baby boo pumpkin on top of it. Done. No, no you're not done. Wrap okay. the, put the ribbon on it. 
Oh, put the ribbon on it. There See? You go. And then you can put the baby boo next to it. And so we did mention cute. baby boos, I hope, because go get the real little white pumpkins or the little orange ones. They last forever, too. They do. It seems to be the smaller the pumpkin, the mm-hmm. longer it lasts. Maybe it, because they're, there's more flesh rather than just, you know, the empty inside. It's going to last longer than your inter- it, it, you're going to be into Christmas and still going to. I know. I always feel yeah. bad about my pumpkins I know. that I, are still around. Well, I guess you can make a pumpkin soup if you want to. Well, uh, well, what I'll do is I'll, I bury them you know, or put them in the compost pile. Mm-hmm. And if you bury them, then you're going to get a little volunteer pumpkin uh, vine coming up. Well, it's so interesting you say that. So I had some, I had a, a tea party, tea, whatever event here. And the, the bulbs, you know, they quit blooming. And I, I don't know, I just kind of threw them in the back of my Oh, in the right. back. you gave them as little gifts or something, or you had them for the table or something. I remember well, I had that. these on the table. No, right. it was like a, a square of them, mm-hmm. of these, and they were all tightly together. Well, I just threw those bulbs. They were spent. I just threw them. In, I don't know why. I just threw them behind my garage. Do you know, I went out and looked, and they're all coming up green shoots. Oh. So I put them back in the container, and I'm watering them now. Brilliant. See, you are a gardener. You did it. Well, if neglect is gardening, then I'm there. Well, sometimes it is. Sometimes Mm -hmm. things just are better left alone. Another thing that I love to use are feathers. I think feathers are such a great addition to a fall display. Uh, You know, it kind of has the sense of the feeling. Like pheasant. Exactly. Pheasant Mm -hmm. feathers. And you can find feathers that have just fallen off you're not inhumanely harvested feathers or anything like that. So you mm-hmm. can purchase feathers. So maybe you get like 10 or 12 feathers and then you could add them to floral displays. You could just put one on top of this stack of books that we're talking about with a ribbon wrapped around it with the baby boo and put a, a feather right next to it. Mm-hmm. Um, remember when we were in Round Top and I bought that um whole the black feathers feathers. yes yes i love those Uh, and they make such a statement in a vignette even if it's just one on its own it really does make a difference amber bottles i have a little collection of amber bottles that i'm when i used to be autumnal i had them displayed on a shelf somewhere in my prior house but that's a great thing to bring out for the fall and maybe well, you just have it with a little sprig of something in it or nothing at all but when there's a little collection you have three of them or more in different heights it's just really really pretty well it's interesting you say that because i think bottles in general will kind of have a fall look now i have a few that kind of have a summer kind of sea glass look now those mm-hmm. don't feel fallish but if you get the regular kind of uh just clear glass. It tends toward the blue, I guess, or some that are kind of greenish. Uh, I think those look great for fall. I don't even think you have to go with amber. You can put things in them Mm -hmm. or not. Mm -hmm. And interestingly, some of these rustic things, some of the vintage things really have that fall feel. So I so agree with you with the vintage books, the vintage bottles. And you know what else I think looks fantastic for fall? And that is to use a wooden dough bowl or a wooden, just a wooden bowl. Yeah. Um, and then you can fill it full of pumpkins. You can fill it full of uh, acorns, the baby booze, perhaps. One of my favorite things, I actually have the wooden bowl that a great grandmother used for dough. Oh. Uh, I not, like nothing better than to put apples in there or pears. And the apples actually last longer, but I love sitting those out. And they're just so fresh and beautiful and oh, they just yeah. feel so seasonal. Yes, I love that too, whether it be green or red or even some yellow ones. And if you have a long dough bowl or a big bowl or something like that, and you're like, oh, wow, how many baby boos would I have to get to fill it? You know, you can crinkle up some paper, you can put some even dish towels sort of balled up underneath it, and then, you know, start then layering on your decorative items that you're going to have in there so you don't have to fill the entire bowl with something. If you're doing a display in something flatter like or like a long dough bowl or on a tray or something like that, you can also tuck leaves underneath. Mm-hmm. You could tuck seeded eucalyptus in between the baby boos. And I love what you're saying. And I don't think people realize this. If you have a massive dough bowl or some massive container that you're putting stuff in, just put some paper in the bottom, like you just said, or something just as 
filler. Like what about those olive buckets? I mean, you could just yeah. put something in the bottom of those too and then fill them with the, with your pumpkins or Well, or what boards. I did, I think I did it last year, is I put some of the these fakies that we're talking about that I had to purchase mm-hmm. on the bottom. Mm-hmm. And then I put some white pumpkins on the top. So I wasn't buying more and more pumpkins because particularly if you were buying the Cinderella's or something like that, they're usually not that cheap. I mean, Trader right, Joe's true. always seems to have the best deal on the pumpkins. But, you know, if you have to buy that many pumpkins and you're just lugging all those pumpkins everywhere. Mm-hmm. So I made use of the faux ones that way by filling up the bottom of galvanized containers with them. Galvanized metal is also a, a thing that I think also evokes the fall. It just feels sort of like you drag your bucket out to apple pick or something like that. So that's mm-hmm. a really pretty way to decorate. Even if you had a galvanized bucket that sort of had a nice age to it and say you found a mid to large size pumpkin, you could just plop that right on top of it. Done. Oh, yeah. yeah. And another thing that you can mix in with pumpkins in a dough bowl or some other display are deer shed. I think people have a misconception that deer are harmed uh, when you have deer sheds, but that's why I call them sheds instead of antlers. They shed them. They they come off, you know, break off, and then there you go. And then you can just pick them up and, or you can even buy the faux ones. Both of them look great. If you are struggling to find pumpkins or you just want to off-road it a little bit, how about pomegranates? How about some gourds? There are so many different kinds of gourds that you can pretty much find, at least here in California. We are kind of spoiled with the amount of produce that we can get our hands on throughout the entire year. But there are a lot of different gourds available. And so if you wanted to start your fall decor even earlier than pumpkin season, start with that. Use some pomegranates. That's a beautiful, and that would bring in that a lovely sort of purpley maroonish color. Yes. If you wanted to do the palette we were talking about earlier, yes. And you know, in walking in my neighborhood, you know, I'm always looking to see how buddy how everyone's done their front porch, uh, and if I can see inside the house, even better. All the better. All the better. That's right. So that's why you want to go around dusk when you can see in. <laughs> it's so funny for I those that are too. interested. Like, hmm. Hey, dogs, how about a walk? <laughs> That's right. Uh, But anyway, there were these different sized lanterns all on the front porch and somebody had filled them all with the fairy lights and they were on and it was so pretty. Oh, so pretty. And I was thinking, man, I need to go buy a bunch of lanterns because I don't really have too many, but it really was a stunning look and so easy to do. And, you know, if you have the lanterns, they work for all seasons. You're just going to change out what's in them depending on your season. But for the fall, you can put the the little pumpkins in there. You can put some ribbon in there. You can put pine cones, uh, anything that kind of works and, uh, you know, some moss in if you need to put to fill in some little spaces and then put in those lights. Uh, and it's just a beautiful look. But so, but anyway, you don't have to use just a candle in them, I guess is what I'm going to say. But if you want, that's even a great look. It's just several lanterns with candles in them. Right, and put them on the remotes or the ones mm-hmm. that have the timers, and then they'll just pop on when people like Anita are walking by, mm-hmm. and they'll really appreciate it. Don't you just love a great recommendation from a friend? Well, we're delighted to be recommending these companies and their wonderful products to you today. And let them know your friends at DTT sent you. Inevitably, with the new year, come wellness goals. One very effective and easy-to-reach goal is to add dose to your wellness regime. Dose is expertly formulated organic wellness shots that support your liver in one delicious drink. Formulated with ingredients clinically shown to support liver health, potent turmeric, milk thistle, and ginger. They're zero sugar and zero calories. Did you know that your liver performs over 500 special functions? Since I learned all that my liver is doing, I started with Dose to support all those vital functions. I take a shot of refreshing Dose two times per week to combat everyday toxins from food, meds, alcohol, and unhealthy air. Since starting with Dose about a month ago, I am definitely feeling an overall improvement in my health. So if you want to give Dose a shot and invest in your health like I have, Dose is offering DTT listeners 15% off your first order, plus an additional 15% off if you subscribe for a monthly delivery. That's 30% off your first order. So go to dosedaily.co slash DTT and use the code DTT. That's dosedaily.co.co slash DTT and use the code DTT. Go ahead. 
clean out your closet. Then head straight to Quince. I love every item Quince offers from wardrobe to decor. And I can really recommend their ultra stretch super wide leg pants at $49.90. The price is unbeatable and the look is so flattering. It keeps you in on top and flares out of the bottom. Everything feels right with Quince. The price, the quality, and the sustainability. Quince offers a range of luxury wardrobe and home goods at prices within reach. And like Quince's clothing, their home goods are priced 50 to 80% less than similar brands. Quince only works with factories that use safe, ethical, and responsible manufacturing practices, along with premium fabrics and finishes. Once you've cleaned out your closet and refreshed with Quince, you can also add something to your home decor. So give your wardrobe and your home the refresh it needs with Quince. Go to quince.com slash DTT to get free shipping and 365 day returns on your next order. That's quince, Q-U-I-N-C-E dot com slash DTT for free shipping and 365 day returns. Quince.com slash DTT. And let me know how you love those pants. Another thing that you can uh, add to your front door or maybe even an interior door is a wreath. Now, I have told you I am still on the fence about how I feel about wreaths. I was really into them for a while and I was always making a different wreath for a, different seasons and then kind of stopped doing all of that. Uh, but I took a look to see what was out there for all of you and I found a really beautiful one at a site called Food 52. It's more of a culinary site. It's a really, really pretty, uh, they're calling it a half branch. So half of it is covered and the other half is uh, just left the grapevine, the, you know, the, the empty grapevine. Oh, right. I've seen those. <laughs> right. Which is really pretty, but it's really full on the other side mm -hmm. and sort of wild looking. And it's in this really beautiful tones like sage green. And I was almost like a blue, but you mm. guys should take a look at it. We'll put the link in the show notes to that particular one. And I have to give a shout out to my mom because she just made the absolutely most beautiful fall wreath for her door. It is a showstopper. So good job, mom. Really. Oh, <laughs> Oh, well, and this is also a time to set your candles out. Like you said, I prefer the ones on timers unless I'm they're close by so I can make sure nothing's going to catch on fire. But, uh, you know, it's just a time for kind of coziness. And I think that's what we all like about it. And I think just the change of season. It's exciting every year. I have a couple of tips that don't really involve decor. Can I share them right now? Mm -hmm. They're garden tips. I want you all to resist the urge to clean up all your leaves. This may really run against the grain of a lot of people because we want nice and tidy and all those things should be blown away and put in plastic bags and hauled off to some landfill somewhere. Maybe this year you could leave your leaves or you could leave some of your leaves or you could gather all your leaves and then you can put them under your shrubs and around your perennials and sort of tuck them in for the winter, particularly if you're a person who lives in a cold place. This is going to do an amazing job of adding nutrients to your soil and also it's going to give all the little creatures like all the little insects and a lot of our bees that live in the ground an opportunity to nest in there over the winter so think about doing that there's a lot of good reasons to do it I could keep going on but enough said well great idea mm -hmm. so I'm gonna go back inside okay now that you've helped us with our extra leaves and you know what I saw on uh, Pinterest I thought was a really cool idea was these were real acorns and someone had painted the bottom part different colors and it looked like it was nail polish. I don't know if it was that or just some glossy paint, mm -hmm. but they were kind of glossy paint and they, some were blue, some were green and different colors. They looked so pretty. Wouldn't that be beautiful in a, a glass bowl or mm -hmm. just something where you could see through and see them? I think that would be so pretty. I'm just thinking somebody had a lot of COVID time on their hands. Well, <laughs> <laughs> Even in my height of craftiness, when I was running two Girl Scout troops, I never t paused in the action long enough to paint the bottom of an acorn. But now I kind of wish I had. You know, it sounds goofy, but they no, look nice. Lovely. I saw something on Instagram not too long ago, and I was like, oh, wow. And then I thought, no, no, no. So they paint it's a mother and daughter team they painted like like beautifully painted not just like one color painted little scenes inside 
oyster shells. Wow. Wow. Yes. Okay. That wow. takes some commitment. Yes. A lot of commitment. And uh, my, my first thought was like, oh, wow, all those oysters, oh, my husband loves oysters, all those oysters Peter's eaten all over the years. I could have been just saving those from the restaurants <laughs> and then having these wonderful craft projects, but no. Wow. That sounds kind of involved. It does. It does. But yeah, mm -hmm. the acorn's pretty easy. Maybe you can even dip them. Speed it up a little. Oh, maybe they did Speed that. There crafting. you go. There you go. I don't know. Well, you have to be really careful, and you maybe have to put painter's tape on the other part. It's okay. Too complicated. All right. Well, this one's a little easier. How about just having a basket of mums or there an you urn go with some mums in it? And then I'm thinking about how we love in the fall, uh, cooler months to have some birch logs in a basket or just sitting by the fireplace. Yeah. Looks like they're ready to go in, whether you have show a wood logs. fireplace or not. Right. Show, yeah, show logs. <laughs> Don't but let these, anybody put them on fire. <laughs> thinking about, I have a few more things here, are some copper accents. This is the time to have like a copper tray or maybe a copper pot that you've put some mums in or something. I think this would be a beautiful time to set those out. Uh, I also saw on Pinterest some buffalo plaid painted pumpkins, mm. which I never would have thought of doing, but they were really pretty. Yeah, I'm going to put that on the list with the painted acorn bottoms. Well, <laughs> <laughs> well uh, you know how, well, a few years ago, everyone was doing the decoupaging of the pumpkins, remember? Yeah, yeah I do. I do. I, I might have dipped my toe into that too. I've just yeah. become less crafty, although I do appreciate a good craft. Yeah, I yeah. appreciate yeah. everything you're saying. No, well, you know, I, I talk a good game. I mean, am I going to go do any of these things? No. But, um, I mean, all the crafty things. But but I like, I appreciate them from afar. Yeah, well, it's good. To, it's, it's all That's good right. inspiration. You can yeah. see something and then it springs you to another place. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. And then uh, enamel pitchers. I think that's also something that would be great with some dried flowers. Or those wheat shafts like you were mm -hmm. talking about. Or what about the dried pussy willows that we found at Trader Joe's recently? I'm wondering, you know. What I love that. But there's, that's, a season, uh, that's a spring thing, I think. Well, they just, did they? Was that in the spring? Well, it seems kind of fall. Was. was that? Oh, my goodness. I feel like I just got them. <laughs> well, that's when pussy willows come out. I have no idea what month it is. Oh, I don't right. It's fall. It's fall. Okay. It's fall, y'all. Stop it. Okay. All right. And then, and then how about some little hay bales to put on your porch to put, you know, your mums or whatever, your uh, plants on top of that. I think that would be nice. Now, at our farm, our hay bales are these round hay bales that are about six feet tall. So I'm not talking about those. I'm talking about the little squares. Oh, wow. Do they look like the ones in like a Dutch painting, the rolled up hay? Bales? Oh, yeah. They're massive. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Whoa. Mm -hmm. That's very cool. Okay. So Anita, what is our hot topic today? Well, it's a Wall Street Journal article and it's should you feel guilty for buying furniture knockoffs? It's kind of an interesting topic. I guess the real point of it is that you should either be buying the real thing or if you're going to buy something that's not the real thing, go to a different design altogether so you can buy just another real thing that's cheaper. Uh, so it was kind of interesting. They were talking about that and saying, is that wrong to buy something that's a knockoff? And so we're all about finding something great for a good price. So as long as it's not some illegal knockoff, you know, like something, a fake Rolex, you know, that's mm -hmm. not really legal. If it's not faking some brand that it's not, uh, but it's just kind of a... Tweaked a, it, maybe. Tweaked it, a nod to it. Mm -hmm. I personally, I don't have a problem with it at all. So I didn't even know people felt bad about doing that. Yeah, I guess it really is very subjective. If you're getting something and you're going to go and pretend that it's a, it's the real deal or whoever you're purchasing it from is pretending it's the real deal, whether it you know be a personal piece of furniture or a watch or whatever, I think that that's not a great way to shop right. or a great sure. way to spend your money. You do want to support whoever is creating the actual item. But right. yeah, there are so many ways that you can sort of, as we said, use the word tweak, or you can just change the design a little bit. And it's different, but it's inspired by the more expensive item. Well, and what I'm thinking about is sometimes there's some furniture item maybe, and it's a $5,000, $10,000 item. And then there's a knockoff that's, you know, less than $500. Well, someone who's buying that was never going to buy the $5,000 item. And, it, you know, obviously that's a completely different uh, price bracket. 
Right. So, yeah, I think it's nice to have some version uh, in a reasonable price uh, that's, you know, slightly different, obviously. But, yeah, you don't want to, them to be saying it's the real deal. I mean, that's something totally different. Or- right. Like, in, I mean, what comes to mind for me is like the handbag world. You know, if you're exactly. pretending it's a Gucci and someone's telling you it's a Gucci, but you kind of know, like, how am I getting a Gucci for a hundred bucks? You know, or <laughs> you're not. <laughs> and you're like, oh, it's a Gucci. You know, that's different. Yeah. But, and, and again, really, when you think about it, there is that saying, there's really no new ideas. Everything's just sort of built upon the other thing. And mm-hmm. I'll, maybe a Nothing little bit Nothing new different. under the sun. Yeah. yeah. We would have very few items if nobody could tweak it and make it a little bit different or use a different material and charge a little bit less, right? I mean, there wouldn't, there would be so much less stuff. <laughs> yeah. 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 I saw an IZOD, uh, the, the fake IZOD and actually the, the tail was a little up <laughs> on the little... Oh, is it like it's uh, a alligator. crocodile, not an alligator? <laughs> it, was something, it was something like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I was thinking, wow, you'd have to really look closely at that to notice that wasn't the Oh, that's the so funny. Yeah, yeah. Someone was pointing that out. So, okay. <laughs> well, I thought that was really interesting. It definitely made me think about it. So everybody should take a look at that um, article. It's, it's kind of interesting. You see what mm-hmm. side of that uh, discussion you fall on. Green Chef is a delicious delight any time of year, but especially during the holidays. What a wonderful vision to behold of the Green Chef boxes on your doorstep. Green Chef is the number one meal kit for eating well. And it makes eating well so easy with plans to fit every lifestyle, whether you're keto, paleo, vegan, vegetarian, gluten-free, or just looking to eat a more balanced diet. So let Green Chef take the work out of eating clean this holiday season. And if you've got guests coming, shop Green Bundles. They're now available at the Green Market. It's your one-stop shop for nutritious grab-and-go breakfasts, including vegan options, brunch kits, wholesome lunches, ready-to-eat snacks, veggie sides, and more. You can feel your best this December and do your best with Green Chef because they offset 100% of the delivery emissions as well as 100% of the plastic in every box. Go to greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 60DTT and get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. greenchef.com slash 60DTT and use the code 6060DTT to get 60% off plus 20% off your next two months. BritBox just keeps getting better. The new Archie is amazing. And it's not the comics. It's about Cary Grant. Archie is the brand new limited series starring Jason Isaacs as Archie Leach, the man who became Cary Grant. From the award-winning screenwriter of Philomena, Archie tells Grant's born in Britain, made in Hollywood story, the dramatic grit to glamour transformation that led him to become one of the most famous people in the world. You are going to absolutely love the acting but also the styling, the outfits, the scenery. It's the first time his story has been told in collaboration with his daughter, Jennifer Grant, and ex-wife, Diane Cannon. The performances from Jason Isaacs and the rest of the cast are amazing, and it's only available on BritBox. So sign up for BritBox today to stream Archie and other fan favorites from any device. And we have a special limited time offer for our U.S. and Canadian listeners. Get 50% off, yes, that's 50% off, your first month when you sign up for a monthly plan. But only if you go to BritBox.com and use our promotion code DTT at checkout. You're going to love Archie. So head over right now and get 50% off your first month of BritBox. Use the promotion code DTT at BritBox.com. I have a crush today that is in fitting with our topic. Has oh. anybody seen those raffia pumpkins that Target is selling? Oh, I haven't been out there. Okay. Lately. They're so cute. Well, I saw it online and I had put a couple in my shopping cart and then I took them out because I said, I do not need another pumpkin with fake pumpkins and velvet pumpkins and real pumpkins coming down the road. But if you are in the market and you really want to have a new little pumpkin in your life, then this is something you might want to check out. They're a lot less expensive than the velvet pumpkins that we're talking about. They're different price points, but somewhere like all under 20 bucks. I think the five by seven was like $12 or something like that. Super cute. They look pretty well made as well. Oh, nice. Well, I love it when we can find something new and fresh. 
Yeah. So that's cool. Well, mine is a very practical thing that I just got. You know, I've been making that homemade bread. I'm still making my bread. Oh my goodness. It's Can become you a lifestyle it? for you. It, it has. It has. So, but you know, when you have a uh, gluten-free bread or if you make your own bread, it's not a full size slice usually, you know, like wonder bread, you know, it's whatever, it's a certain size slice and these are smaller. You mean so it with, doesn't get as tall? Well, loaf? no, because I only, mine doesn't get as tall because I only make enough for one day at a time. I only mm -hmm. make a, a, and so that's a pretty small loaf. Mm -hmm. So it's not going to rise a lot. Okay. So it's, it's just not going to be as tall. You know, it's going to be more, you know, and it's kind of more like a baguette, I guess, almost what I make. Okay. It was getting lost in the toaster, but you don't <laughs> want to be sticking your fork in there, right? <laughs> I'm cracking up because I did this this morning. Uh, Simple Mills has a mix for gluten-free bread. Uh -huh. I failed at the sourdough. I'm a sourdough non-starter. No, 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 this say. one. I'm using one that has adds yeast. It's not really sourdough, but it tastes like it. I'll, I'll give you the recipe if you want. Well, maybe I could do that. But anyway, I made this one out of the box. And yes, it's a short sort of loaf. See? Yeah. And then I was putting it on the top of the toaster. That didn't work. And I put it in there and then I had to unplug and stick my finger in. <laughs> <laughs> then you're going to need my thing. This is perfect. I need your thing. Bamboo tongs. Because oh. that's what we were. Yeah. <laughs> So that doesn't you know, happen. No, they're bamboo. So you're not going to get electrocuted. So you can just stick those in and get your piece of toast out. So I'm that was like our big excitement. Those came yesterday and we were like ooing and wow. on. Except, we're on, except that we're on a detox this week. So we're not eating bread. So I had to set them aside and say, we'll be using oh, you. You'll, you you'll come in handy. You'll be excited about. Yeah. Next week, we'll be using you. Get ready. <laughs> <laughs> Well, there you, oh, wow. I didn't even know, I, I didn't know that existed, uh, nor would I have known that I needed it, but I do. Yeah, okay. I'll include the link. And they're inexpensive, so as you might guess. Yeah, maybe you should get two, just in case. Well, they come as a set of two, and I'll include the link. Oh, perfect. God, you're answering all my questions. I'm telling you. I'm, it, well, yeah, you I'm set. glad I listened to this podcast. Really <laughs> Aren't you? Yeah. Now we're going to talk about one of your questions. Amy F. has a question this week, Anita. It's about creating an area in her open concept, first floor, for entertaining. And Amy wants to talk about how she chooses out of her furniture to really enhance the entertaining experience in her mm -hmm. room. One thing we should note, and was very refreshing to see in the photos, there's not a TV in this room. I love that. Yes, that's a very rare these days, isn't it? Yes, because in fact, the, the sofa, I, it was looking at a wall and I was like, oh, did the TV fall off? No, there's no TV. Well, I'm sure the TV's in a different room. <laughs> well, probably or using iPads, but it's a, that's a wonderful space mm -hmm. for entertaining and you're not going to have the distraction of a TV. So Amy sent us some photos and it's complicated to talk about a room when everybody can't see it. So we're going to answer her question generally. And so everybody can apply that to their own spaces. And then, of course, I will get back to Amy uh, via email. So, Amy, uh, if I'm setting up in general for entertaining, what I'm looking for is large paths. So I don't want to see a lot of little furniture or things blocking major pathways so that you can get some flow. Uh, if you're having a party or entertaining, you want people to be able to walk freely throughout the areas that, that they're going to be walking through. So kind of think about how you're going to be using the space, how people might be walking through. And then I like to think about, you know, when they're coming through, where can I set up for people to get some something to drink? Where can I set up some, some appetizers? Where are they going to eat their meal? Where would I set up a buffet? Uh, where would they sit? So I think these are the kind of the things to think through is flow and then where are going to be a lot of areas where you can set food out and drinks. And then for the seating area, I'm looking for some conversation areas. So I would say maybe a couple of places where there's two chairs together here, two chairs together there. So it, they don't have to all be one large conversation area. In fact, that often doesn't work if it's a big room. So I'm looking for kind of like a hotel would have like, a you know, two seats together here, two seats together there. And that makes for a nice uh, party uh, setup. And then, you know, obviously some comfortable chairs and really don't even have to have seating at a table if you're having a party. That's nice if you do. But 
you know, a lot of times I just put the food on the dining room table at, and use it as a buffet and then have people sitting other places around the room. Anyway, those are my thoughts. So I hope that's helpful, Amy. And uh, what did you think, Kelly? Yeah, great, great idea, Anita. And Amy has it set up where her, it looks like her dining room table is on one side and then there's a console table and then her sofa and then sort of the living area on the other side. I think that's a great delineation. And if as Anita said, if you've got nice pathways in between those two spaces, people can come back and forth, grab some food, come back over. I would suggest an added two or maybe even three other chairs to sit on or a poo for something like that. If you're going to have the main sofa, I would use maybe some smaller, more mobile chairs. Try nesting tables. That's great for entertaining. And then when you're not entertaining, they just slide under each other and could be tucked away on the side of the sofa or a chair rather than having one big end table. And then maybe a nice size glass coffee table. So the glass might just opens up the space a little bit, low visual impact, large enough where people could maybe lean in and put a drink down from different chairs and from the sofa as well. Well, and I'd like to see some height in the room in Amy's particular situation. So I can talk about that with her in the email, but a, any entertaining space, it would be nice to have, you know, some, some beautiful art on the wall or a large mirror, maybe a mirror that's reflecting uh, what's going on on the other side of the room. If you have a fireplace in your particular space, I don't believe Amy does, but you know, that's a nice area to sort of be the focal point. Um, so maybe you arrange your furnishings around around there that's sort of cozy particularly if you're not having a television on oh i think that's great she should amy you should have lots of ideas <laughs> <Hopefully they'll help. laughs> yeah and hopefully a lot of people can uh you know also parlay those thoughts into whatever space they have today was so much fun it was great to talk about fall with everyone and remember we are here to inspire you to create a beautiful home until next time